Professor Phoebe Conduri, who really doesn't need an introduction, but she will walk us through the, the findings of this, of this work that we have done together. Thank you, Barbara, for your amazing, provocative, but not so much uh, thoughts because as a chair of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network Global Climate Hub, we work on each one of them, and I think that you summarized the main points that we need to accelerate, the main focus of our acceleration, if something is going to really change, if we are going to achieve the transformations that we need. Thank you very much uh, for having me here. It has been a huge pleasure working with uh, Huawei. It has been um, a journey uh, to find the road uh, towards retrieving the answer for the very crucial question, I think one of the most crucial questions for this transformation, what would be the jobs that, we, that will create the capacity for the transition, for the green and digital transition to actually take place? 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. And we all know that in order to achieve a transition, it's not just a transition, it's a transformation. We need social cohesion. No big transformation can be achieved in conflict. We need cooperation, collaboration, and social cohesion. And in order to have a social cohesion, you need stakeholder engagement. And in order to engage the stakeholders, you need to give them to uh, empower them with the capacity to be engaged in the transformation. And this means you need to empower them with the skills and knowledge to become co-designers of the transformation, to become owners of the transformation, to become stakeholders of the transformation. And in order to do that, you need education, vocational training, upskilling and reskilling. And this is what we try to uncover through our uh, research with Highway. So, I lead this Alliance of Excellence for Research and Innovation on IFORIA. Very quickly, this is an alliance of research and innovation centers, innovation accelerators, science policy networks, and science associations and academies uh, that bring uh, together a lot of resources and a lot of researchers working on the sustainability transition. First, we measure. Uh, ESG, SDG performance and work on sustainable pathways, then um, financing pathways, then we work on uh, climate neutrality and resilience pathways, seas and ocean pathways, water, food, energy, nexus pathways, and of course, innovation, acceleration, education, upskilling, and reskilling. And it's the last thematic that really covers the work that we do with Highway. In order to understand what kind of jobs and skills we need, we need to understand where uh, our direction. Our direction is very explicitly defined in the 17 SDGs, UN Agenda 2030, 17 SDGs, 169 targets, 250 KPIs. Every year we measure the performance of each and every country across these targets and KPIs. And not only that, but we downscale to from global to regions of the world, for example, European, and then from European uh, to country level, and then from country level to uh, uh, cities level, and regions within nations level, and then we are even able to downscale to company level. So, measuring the performance against the SDGs is important but the, because this is the only global agenda at the moment. Together with the Charter of UN 
um, uh, human rights, there is no other global agreement. We have 163 countries agreeing to implement these SDGs. So this is the general policy framework. Our report, and you can find it here, is more focused on Europe, but it also elaborates beyond Europe. But let us focus on Europe first. So we have a very detailed and explicit it's, uh, sorry, explicit um, description of the green and digital European policies. The flagship policy is, of course, the European Green Deal. And within the European Green Deal, we find the aspects of green, digital, industrial policy, just transition policy. And we bring together all these policies in order to sketch what is needed in terms of jobs and skills to implement these policies. So let me go very quickly. This is how we are doing in terms of implementing the SDGs. Not good enough. We are on the blue line and the projection on the dotted blue line. We need to increase our pace of implementation seriously. We need to be on the green line. And the darker blue means higher implementation. The lighter blue means lower implementation. And we do that at different scales, Europe, Greece, we do this for every country of the world. Subnational regions within Greece, we do this for every country in the world. And we can also uh, map and uh, identify the SDG content in trade. So for example, we can tell you how much of the deforestation of Brazilian forests is really attributed to goods and products that are produced, uh, that are consumed in Europe. So we can measure what is going on with regards to the SDGs. And we also know exactly with a global stock stage how much of our pledges with regards to climate uh, change is actually being implemented. So these are the global policies, the layer of SDG 13 uh, and the relevant global pledges. And then we go to Europe. This is how we treat the data in this report. European Green Deal for access become um, uh, climate neutral by 2050, zero pollution, clean tech leadership by European companies, leave no one behind, just transition. We have one trillion supporting this. And in addition to this one trillion, for the different aspects of the European Green Policies, we have Next Generation EU that was launched after COVID to help Europe become, recover from COVID in a green and digital way. And there is where green and digital was explicitly identified. So what does green and digital future mean? A green and digital future means that we invest in decarbonizing power generation and industry, promoting circular economy, protecting and restoring biodiversity, and strengthening sustainable mobility. What is digital? Improve cybersecurity, deploy cutting edge technologies, helping deploy digital skills and improving connectivity. So these are the skills we need to uh, empower our labor force in order to implement the green and digital transition. And to further um, articulate the transition, Europe has a climate law, the first time that the obligation to become climate neutral by 2050 is now a legal obligation. 55% uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions uh, compared to what we have in had in 1990. 
and Climate Neutrality 2050. In addition, we have the stream, um, streamlining of capital towards sustainable investments. This is the EU taxonomy. The EU taxonomy says I will give you a cheap loan if your investment is about climate mitigation, adaptation, sustainable use of water, sustainable use of oceans, a circular economy and pollution control. And not only that, you also have the Corporate Sustainability Directive that obliges big companies to submit a sustainability report that is very detailed in the informational requirement and it is also the monitored and assessed and digitally tagged. So, in this kind of world, and with the Fit for 55, the 13 legislative proposals that are refining the regulation across Europe with regards to the energy system, the ETS, the uh, land use and forest system, uh, mobility, cars, vans, aviation, shipping, most of them have been voted uh, in 2023, so now these are legal requirements. We have a big um, framework, a big regulatory, legal and policy framework, which basically tells us what are the skills and occupations that we need in order to implement. And together with the green and digital policies, you need to add to add the digital policies of Europe. Uh, we have a Digital Service Act, a Digital Market Act, European Chips Act, European Digital Identity, Artificial Intelligence, European Data Strategy, Space Strategy, European Defense Strategy, EU, US Trade and Technology uh, Strategy, and we also have Destination Earth Initiative, which is about creating a digital twin uh, with regards to the human effects on natural environment, uh, which basically uh, allows us uh, to uh, simulate the green and digital transition on the environment. And we also have the industrial policy that is focusing on accelerating the twin transitions. So what we did with put together all these policies in an AI-driven, uh, data-driven uh, method, methodology, method, not methodology, but method, and we've identified the new set of green and digital skills. These are the policies we've considered. We did it for all sectors in an aggregated mode. We did it by sector, agri, forestry, fishing, construction, energy, ICT, manufacturing, transport, water, treatment. And we also identified the explicit skills that we are needing, green and digital, and then combine those skills into solid occupations for the future. So we have a holistic map of what we are going to be needing in order to implement all the policies that I've shown you before. So it's a data-driven framework that allows us to classify skills, knowledges, knowledge occupations in the EU labor market. We find that the demand for occupations with a high green and digital score has significantly increased since 2015 in all sectors. The skills classified as the most <coughs> digital and jointly most digital and green are the most demanded skills for all occupations, even today. And we also provide the recommendations for universities and for um, vocational training in order to fill the gap in the need for the green and digital skills and accelerate the transition. We use the European Skills, Competence, Qualifications and Occupations Framework. It's a huge data that basically classifies European skills, competences and knowledge concepts and provides relations between occupations and skills and knowledge 
and basically answers allows you to use all the data, all this data to answer the question which skills and knowledge concepts are relevant for each of the occupations. Then what we uh, do, we use uh, the classifications and hierarchies provided by this uh, database and we develop a data-driven scoring model to classify occupations on their level of greenness, digitalization, and jointly greenness and digitalization. And we have an explicit uh, ranking of the most uh, needed um, occupations in the green sphere, in the digital sphere, and combined in the green and digital sphere. For example, smart home engineer, smart home installer, geothermal technician, green ICT consultant. But I will let you look at the report because it's very detailed in the data analysis. We also find that employment growth of green and digital skills is very strong and we have a significant effect on employment growth in art and recreation sectors, finance and insurance, ICT, professional services, manufacturing, and energy supply services. We also do an analysis of uh, the advertisements, current state of advertisements, job openings, and we find that the top green and digital skills and knowledge concepts are among the most requested skills in online job uh, advertisements. So again, a second confirmation of the validity of the green and digital skills we have identified as the most wanted ones. Finally, the recommendations for universities and vocational training. We need our universities to restructure, to transform their curricula. They need to be more holistic, more integrated in order to support the sustainability transition. And they need to be more focused on the new jobs that are going to be created that are able to support and empower the green and digital transition. And we give recommendations by sector, the financial sector, mainstreaming ESGs and enhancing, enhancing ESGs and SDG matrices. Energy sector, we need technical energy, uh, knowledge on energy efficiency measures, on renewable energy technologies, on um, energy markets with uh, regards to manufacturing, raw material collection, pre-processing, production distribution, trade, sustainable business and product development, agriculture and food, again, many skills that need to be advanced, wastewater treatment, improved packaging, sensoring and process control, uh, water and waste, uh, uh, water reduction and so on. In the report, you will find the exact definition of all of these um, occupations. And in addition, we also provide recommendations to the, with regards to specific skills. With regards to green skills, we need renewable energy expertise, energy efficiency, circular economy, environmental regulations, and with regards to digital skills, data analysis, internet of things, cybersecurity, AI, and machine learning. All is detailed in the report. I don't have time to uh, explain in detail and communicate in detail the wealth of information there, but you can look at the report um, the, to scan the idea of the report.